Good morning and welcome to Cincy Lifestyle. You know, it's a beautiful day outside. Well, you know, maybe it's more of a beautiful day inside, Clyde. You know, it's really going to be hot out there and I think they're expecting some rain. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, yeah, all of that is true. Uh, and welcome back, by the way. We missed you yesterday. Hope you had a good time. Good day oh, off. I did. It was really fun. And I know this, this is why we have a team. Yes, you guys did a great job yesterday, and I appreciate <laughs> you giving me some time, <laughs> extra time, to, to just relax and do really pretty much nothing. But oh. I did discover that I'm drinking a lot more iced tea. Yeah, instead of my typical hot tea every morning, mm -hmm. I turned to iced tea. I hear you. I hear you. Well, uh, I don't know what you did yesterday. I'm guessing you didn't play basketball, right? I did not. Okay. All right. Well, because uh, we've gonna, we're going to show you a young lady uh, who's been uh, stunning people with her basketball skills. Now, here she is. Her name is Carolina Ramirez. She's from Florida, and she's only 12 years old. Oh, Look what she's doing at 12. Oh, my goodness. Oh, she is oh such a show-off. She is such the show-off. Now, she's been honing her basketball skills since she was four years old. She's 12 now. Um, and uh, you, can you can find her on Instagram because her family's been documenting what she's doing. Look at that. Look at that. 12 years old? That's exactly right. Now, guess what oh she wants goodness. to do for a living? Hopefully basketball. <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> you nailed it. Uh, she wants to be in the WNBA or she wants to play uh, basketball overseas. A and that makes a lot of sense. But her father says one of the, <clears throat> in one of the videos I saw, her father says one of the things that he really likes about her emphasis on basketball is it teaches her to compete in a world in which she will have to compete as she grows up no matter what she does. So. I, I don't know about you, Mona, but that sounds like a lot of common sense from a dad who is guiding his daughter in the right way. <laughs> it absolutely does, Clyde. You know, I, she may just very well be the first middle schooler recruited <laughs> by the WNBA. You, look, think about it. Mona, I never learned how to use a pogo stick. Much less, I, I also <laughs> never learned how to dribble a basketball, as you can probably attest. Much less do them both at the same time. So anyway, wow, she's a yes. show. She's a show off, but she's a very talented young lady, and we wish Man, her well. And she is. I'm excited for her. She's got a bright future ahead. That, that's exactly right. Hey, you've probably heard of the summer slide. Now that's where kids' education kind of falls behind during the summer months. Well, now there's the COVID slide for obvious reasons, but the Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County is aiming to prevent that through its summer learning program. And here now to tell us more about that summer learning program is Paula Brim Heger from the Public Library of Cincinnati and Hamilton County. Paula, thanks so much for talking to us this morning. Thank you very much for the invitation. Glad to be here. So, so you guys are gearing up uh, for summer education and, and to provide learning opportunities. Tell us a little bit about some of the things you've got going on. Well, to combat that COVID slide you talked about, we are currently offering a variety of things, including activity booklets for specific age groups from pre-K through teens, as well as one free book for every child or teen to take home and to keep. For families with preschoolers, we also have an early literacy calendar with daily literacy activities. So these are all great things that you can pick up at any of our drive through or our curbside locations. Coming soon, we'll have some take-home program kits that spark STEM learning and creativity really important because one of the uh, areas that tends to suffer during a summer slide and during the COVID slide, which is a little bit longer this year, is math. So math and science are really important. We also have a host of virtual content from pre-recorded story times to lunch and learns on how to use library resources. So, so and, and I'm glad you addressed some of the subjects that uh, are most important to uh, work on this summer. Have you identified which populations are most at risk? Absolutely. We think that youth and low-income families often are most at risk during the summer generally, and again, during this particular uh, unexpected interruption. So many learning opportunities, which are fabulous, can be fee-based and sometimes beyond the family's budget. 
particularly in this time when lots of people are experiencing disruptions in their income or unemployment. So that's where we come in because our offerings are free. They are available, as I said, in print form or online. We have an app that is Beanstack this year that can help families kind of track what's going on if they prefer to do that. But again, we do have sort of the old fashioned print and a book, which is great, especially during a 90 plus degree stretch of days in a row. These are all excellent things that don't cost anything that, that families sure. can enjoy together. Sure, and let's talk about one other aspect of this because you also provide free meals too, right? That's right. Um, when school was interrupted and all during the summer, sometimes regular meal options for some kids are also interrupted. So kids through 18 years of age can pick up meals at several of our locations, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And that's through a federally funded program. When we participate with a great community partner, I would encourage everyone to check Cincinnati Library dot org slash summer because that will give you the most up to date locations and times. Uh, Paula, right quick, just just one additional question, and then we then we gotta uh, hustle along. But how do you account for uh, young folks who might not have the access to uh, technology that you need to do some of these things? Well, um, often we do. Uh, see the kids come to our locations for those free books, but we're working with a variety of other community partners to try and get books out into the community this year at a way that is extremely convenient. So we're working with the Cincinnati Museum Center, Great Parks, the CRC, all of these places where we're taking books that are new or gently used and trying to make sure people are aware that sometimes if they're getting a rec to go box or they're going to the CMC for opening day, we are working to see if we can provide books that yeah. are the original technology so people can take home and keep them as okay. well this summer. That's great. So tell folks how they can get in touch and get more information. Sure. CincinnatiLibrary.org is the best way. We have blogs, social media, and you can also do the old-fashioned give us a call, send us an email, chat with us online, all of those options. Okay. All right. Paula, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thank you so much. Great to talk with you. Have a good day. <laughs> you too. Mona? All right, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? Would it be the ability to fly? Well, you know, that's probably not possible, but there's a fun alternative, and it's called Fly Bungee Fitness. And it's a movement based on a fitness class that you will have, that will have you flying, literally flying through the air. So who do we send to check it out? Adventure Alley. Take a look. Okay. So I'm gonna put you in here. So basically you're gonna stand on that circle for me. Stand on yep. this, this circle. This is gonna go under your arms. You're gonna grab that top strap. What is Fly Bungee Fitness? So Fly Bungee Fitness is a low impact, dance-based, bungee-assisted workout. So you can see by these things connected to the ceiling, we'll customize each station, make sure you know all your cords are correct, the height's correct, strap you in. We teach you five skills in the level one class. You learn five different routines. By the end, everybody's covered in sweat and laughing and having fun, and it's a, it's a great workout. So what would you say is the most beneficial part of doing a fitness class like bungee fitness? Yeah, I have to pick one. Um, <laughs> or two. Well, I would say, number one, that um, I have a lot of fun teaching these classes. I can see people smiling and laughing the whole time they do this. And then I've seen a lot of people who have approached me and said, you know, I really can't do anything else. I have, I have a bad knee, I have, you know, wrist pain or whatever it may be. Um, the low impact aspect of this workout is really beneficial for those people. Yeah, yeah, you got it. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's a burpee. You did it. Um, so That's the best if you kind want, of a burpee. Yeah. by the end of the day, if I teach three or four, I've burned about 2,000 calories. And which is yeah. energy. That is a lot. So yeah. you're moving. <laughs> yes. What is oh, the yeah. energy like? You know, oh. Is there music going? Super upbeat. Um, we teach, this is dance based, like I said. So a lot of our steps, you know, we take time to walk it out in between, we dance it <laughs> out. Um, you learn, you don't have to be a dancer to come and do this class, but um, I do feel like dancers are people who enjoy movement do really enjoy this. So yeah, high energy, 
lots of um, music that gets you amped up and ready to work out and it's just it's a lot of fun it's a whole different thing we're the only one in Cincinnati or you know in the area ever fly bungee fitness this is the only one so um, definitely unique experience Four, big one two woo! <laughs> I'm flying. Yeah, good job. You did it. Now, it. now it makes sense. Fly bungee fitness. That's right. We're flying. I love it. Yeah. So you feel a little bit winded? I do. So yeah. That's, that's surprising. I know. It looks so much easier. It does. Than it is. Because you feel like you're getting the assistance, or you think you're getting the assistance <laughs> from this, yeah. and you are to a point. You are. No impact. You are. But you're still doing a lot of cardio. I was say, it's that... It's that the quick. running, it's the, the quick pace mm -hmm. changing of the burpees to stand up, to fly, to go that way. So, and especially that'll pick up in level yeah. two as well. So we don't really take too many breaks in level two or level three. No. So, but yeah. So that's, Jacqueline, yeah. this has been fantastic. I'm so glad. Thank you did you. great. Yes, Yay. and come on out to Fly Bungee Fitness. This was so much fun. Just give it a try. Yeah, give it a try. Woo. That's a wrap. Let's fly away. Wow, all right. Well, if you want to give Fly Bungee Fitness a try, they do have some new rules to help keep you safe during the pandemic. You can check those out as well as their classes and hours online at flybungeefitness.com or you can find their studio in Oakley. Clyde. Mona, I can see it. I can see you doing those exercises right now as we speak. <laughs> Coming up here on Cincy Lifestyle, a local maker is creating wearable works of art. We'll learn more about artist Maya Collins, how she makes these earrings, and her inspiration for the design. You gotta see this one. Then, has your back been bothering you lately? It could be the way you're sitting. We're gonna learn about something called the Alexander Technique and how it can help correct bad posture and make you feel better. We'll be right back with more. Thanks for staying with us. You know, ever so often, you may see something online or on TV and think, I can do that. Well, that's exactly the moment our next guest had, and she turned it into a thriving business. Want to introduce you to Maya Collins, the owner and creator behind Maya Collins Goods. Maya, thank you so much for uh, being here with us this morning. Thank you for having me. So, so it really was that kind of aha moment, right? That, that where you looked and saw something and said, I can do that. Yeah, so I went down kind of like a YouTube rabbit hole one night because I was going through a little spout of depression and I needed um, kind of like something to occupy my time. And so I went down like kind of like a YouTube rabbit hole and found polymer clay earrings and like found a whole community of people doing this. So I'm super grateful for that. And it turned into way more than I thought it ever would be. Now, I've been down that YouTube rabbit hole before, but I didn't come up with anything quite as creative as polymer clay. What, what drew you to that? So it's just the whole community around it is there's no real sense of like competition or anything. It's just a community of love and helping each other try to prosper and grow. And there's just so much you can do with polymer clay and so many possibilities that you can come up with. So, so tell me a little bit about the process that you go through to create one of your works of art and, and just kind of the start to finish in a very collapsed version. So it's very, it's a long process, but it's a lot of trial and error and I make a lot of mistakes and just a lot of different things. So it's been a huge learning experience and I am pretty much like learning every single day of the process and it's been really, really cool to learn. So, so what is it that inspires you? Is it the learning process itself or is there something else that kind of is the motivating force that keeps you going? So I try to take inspiration from like every day, like little things. Like I'm really into architecture, murals, that sort of thing. So I take a lot of inspiration for that. So yes, it is the learning of polymer clay that I've really taken an interest in because there are so many different techniques that you can do, but also just being able to put the little everyday things that are kind of underappreciated and like try to make that into like a art piece. 
Well, let's give people a chance to look at more of what you've done, perhaps purchase some of that as well. How can people find out more about you or shop for your earrings? So I have my earrings currently at Shop the Wolf Pack in OTR there on Elm Street. But you can also check me out online at Maya Collins Goods on Instagram and then my website, mayacollinsgoods.com. Okay, that's great. Maya, thank you so much and continued success. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> you too. When you go to get up from the couch, do you feel your back twinge with a little bit of pain? Do you notice your shoulders hurt from being hunched over the computer all day? Well, if you do, these are all things that can be prevented through better posture and how you carry your body. And one way of alleviating this is through the Alexander Technique. Fascinating stuff, Mona. All right, it really is fascinating. And right now I want to welcome Meg McCann, an Alexander Technique teacher. Thank you so much for being on the show. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for inviting me. Absolutely. So tell us a little bit about the Alexander Technique. So Alexander Technique is re-education of the nerves and the muscles of the body. We see clients who are in pain because of muscular use, people who have back pain, knee pain, maybe some TMJ. Mm, we mm -hmm. also see artists, people who use their body in their field, like athletes, dancers, singers, people who play the violin like this. Oh. We re-educate them into making the most use of their body. All right, so what makes this technique different than some of the other techniques out there? So when a person uses muscular contraction, uh, it can squeeze bones together. Massage definitely can release some of that muscular contraction mm -hmm. and tension. A lot of times the pain will return though. And what we focus on is teaching, is educating both the person and the body on how to use their body without using all that tension. All right, well Meg, I'm gonna get personal right now Do with it. me. And you know what, I've been having some shoulder pain. Yeah. And so um, I was wondering what can you do about this or what should I be doing about this? Yeah, well, every time we see somebody, we want to know how are they using their body and is there something simple that we could do mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. would change whether they're impinging their pain. So the first thing I notice is you've got a lot of tension in the front of I your see. shoulder and that means that the back of the shoulder has to pull so that you don't curl up in a ball under your piano. Oh. So if we release the front, we can give the back some room. Now I will also tell you this chair has mm -hmm. a big gap and you cannot slide yourself back against the back of the chair. So always notice mm -hmm. whether you have enough support oh. so you really can drop the muscles. That feels better. Yeah, that's just as simple as taking my scarf and putting it behind your back. So how do I relax more this yeah. muscle? Let's think about the word relax. So yes. go ahead and make a fist for me. That is tension. Yes. Now if you release your fist, that's better. Can you yeah. feel that that's releasing yes. the muscles? Now yeah. I'm going to tell you, I'm not relaxed, right? I right. am on TV and I have <laughs> nervous as all get out. But I can still release the muscles of my yeah. body. And that is by giving yourself instruction. Notice okay. the chair underneath you. Right. Notice that your shoulder can fall off your skull. Yeah. And if there is something on your shoulder, like a big heavy purse, hmm. then do something Guilty. to make okay. it not have to be there. <laughs> Use a cross body bag, for example. Move your computer screen. Making sure that your body doesn't have to use muscular contraction unnecessarily is a great way for you to start this messaging to your body. Well, I love this. I feel better already. Yeah. And I am going to commit to you yeah. and myself. Uh, yeah. Going to get a smaller purse, cross body. Cross okay. body, exactly. That's right. Yeah. Meg, where can people get more information? So I do have a website. You saw a couple of the pictures already. Mm -hmm. www.meg-alexander.com. If you use Google, you can find the AMSAT, American Society of Alexander Technique Teachers. And we have a ton, we have a ton of good teachers in the area. All right. We're all here for Meg, you. thank you so much. Appreciate it. Feeling better already. Really relaxed. And we'll be back with more Cincy Lifestyle on the other side of the break. Plus, 
Be sure to check us out on Instagram. We post all kinds of behind the scenes pictures from here on the set and while we are safely out in the community. So follow us on Instagram at Cincy Lifestyle. Stick around, we'll be right back. Take another look outside. If you liked yesterday, you're going to love today. 90s, muggy, feel like 100 degrees out there, a lot of sun. So be careful if you're out working or exercising. And uh, be sure to remember that there's a chance of pop up thunder showers. Just keep an eye out. Uh, check on the pets, check on your friends, family, and neighbors. Mona? Those are really good advice, Clyde. Well, coming up tomorrow on Cincy Lifestyle, you know, we're going to go behind the scenes of what may be the oldest restaurant in our community's history. That's right. Join us as we uncover some history at Mecklenburg Gardens. We'll give you a tour and introduce you to some tasty dishes you can get to go. All right, then a local art museum is reopening. We'll hear more from the people at the Taft Museum of Art on its new COVID-19 precautions and a great new exhibit that you can go see. We'll have all that and a whole lot more. It is happening tomorrow right here on Sensi Lifestyle. So Mona, be, be careful. We got about 30 seconds left, but be careful out in the heat today, huh? I will, I will definitely do that, Clyde. And you know what? I've been sitting up straighter in my chair since we just had that Alexander <laughs> method. Right well, good, spot. I was worried about you. <laughs> Well, yes. uh, that is Cincy Lifestyle <laughs> for this Tuesday, July 7th. Check in with us. Let us know how we're doing or let us know what we should know about so that we can add that to our list of things that we uh, share with you on the show. Uh, that is Cincy Lifestyle for this July day. And be sure to make it a great day. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for watching our video. Now, if you like what you saw, hit the subscribe button. You can also check out full episodes of the show you've never seen before or watch your favorites again and again. And as always, be sure to make it a great day.